you know, a while back, God was saying, focus on me. Um, God works with strangers in mysterious ways. Once upon a time, there was a story called Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill went up the hill. This was around uh, July the 4th. On July the 4th, I had a dream about a yellow hummingbird looked like paradise in a dream. Um, he seemed to be okay at first, you know. Um, but I tell you what, God took me on the ride of my life with him, and I am so thankful for that. <laughs> I'm so thankful for the whole experience. Um, and Jack, you know, he taught me a lot. You know, one thing, he was he was kind of funny. Um, one day his phone was going off. He was on his phone or something like that. And um, I had made a comment. I said something about his phone or something. I said, well, let's show his day like he, t- he looked at me. He said, you focused on the wrong thing. <laughs> and uh, I think we were probably listening to the audio Bible in the background. And I thought to myself, I said, hmm, he's right. You know, they said, um, reproach a wise man and he'll love thee. So... He, he he reproached me, and I loved it. I loved him for that, you know, because he told me I was focused on the wrong thing, and I was. Point, moral of the story was focused on the Lord. So, anyway, <laughs> shalom, the shalom of the Lord. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And he's a he's a good guy. Um, gave him a hard time, but, you know, we shared a lot of laughs. Um, and so, anyway, the more... Actually, I got on here to tell you guys that um, this is what spending time with the Lord looks like. When you diligently seek the Lord, um, repent for your sins, acknowledge God in all your ways so He directs your path. You know, um, be prepared for a roller coaster ride. It's going to be a lot of highs and lows. Count it all joy in my 810. Um, so, this is a um, prophetic utterance, I guess. Um, I got a download my visions and my dreams um my daughter had a dream about a zombie apocalypse this was um maybe two about two or three months ago um so i i was getting like the dreams um god gives her the nightmare she had a nightmare about um a building on fire that was um around the, the riots, around the, the capital riots. It was also during the time where I was doing a lot of praying and seeking the Lord uh, with the Daniel and um, Meshach, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, Daniel and Elias, and uh, Daniel and I bowed down. I, I, I didn't know, uh, I wasn't bowed down uh, to this uh, to this evil king, you know, I was not. So I went on a very, 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 um, you know, it was a very explicit way that I, you know, was spending time with the Lord. You know, I shut myself off from the world. I shut myself off from my kids. I, you know, repeatedly was asked God to rebuke me, you know, if I'm if I'm messing up. And I asked him to do it in a kind way, you know, because God will do, he will correct you in a still, quiet voice. But you got to um, get the wax out your ears. Ask the Holy Spirit to unclog your ears, um, or he'll do it in a, a, a shout. Um, and um, this uh, guy that I had met um, named Q, God gave him a shout. He gave him a stroke because Q blasphemed um, the Holy Spirit. And he became argumentative with me for correcting him on Exodus when I said every green thing God planted, he said was good in the book of Genesis. And um, and this would stem from a conversation where I was trying to um, teach him how to eat better. Um, we in America, we're spoiled. You know, God says it in the Bible. He said we're running around like a bunch of wild asses and we're spoiled. You know, um, you know, people are not willing to accept the fact that people are comfortable in their own dysfunction and not willing to accept the fact that fast foods do, um, they do kill you. They do cause high cholesterol, red beef, red meat causes um, diabetes, clogged arteries. We're not supposed to be eating meat as the main course. Remember? Remember? Okay. Remember when um, when Hebrew when, when the Israelites when they were in the in, in, in uh, Egypt in the desert, they had no meat. Y'all learn how to fast. 
fast prayer, weeping, supplication, sackcloth and ashes. You got to learn how to do these things. You got to get unspoiled out of America. America, you know, is going to send you to the doctor real quick. Going to give you a lot of prescriptions real quick. America going to clog up your arteries real quick. America going to give you a stroke real quick. You know, but God is in control. God is sovereign. And he's in control of all of these things. America wants to keep you addicted, afflicted, and prescriptive, okay? So you got to know the enemy, all right? You got to know the enemy. You got to know the enemy a little bit better. Okay, I was in healthcare industry for 25 years. I'm a nurse. My nursing license is, has never been revoked. I don't have any reprimands on it. There was no reason to, to ever have that. You know, I've only had high levels of, um, um, I'm like, I don't even want to say praise, but, you know, any, every, any establishment I work with, you know, I was always considered one of the top nurses or the top nurse. Um, and I'm not bragging on, on myself, I'm, I'm bragging on God, I'm bragging on um, my heart, you know, because I have a very compassionate, loving heart, I love people, I love taking care of people, I want to see people well, um, I went to nursing because my mother was sick and I watched that growing up, and so, um, and I prayed um, when I was little, probably about 10, I'm 47 now, and says, God, like, why are people so mean, why are people so wicked, you know, I said a lot of prayers to the Lord, and so, um, and in that show, I was asking for wisdom. So, um, 40 years later, here I am. And um, a lot of the wisdom that I that got revealed to me was while I was um, in, in healthcare as a nurse in, uh, in these systems, uh, hospitals, orthopedic nursing, uh, trauma nursing, ER, PACU, uh, med surge, um, mm, geriatrics, um, no PE. I got babies though, so um, I've done I've done a lot of different types of nursing, and so anyway, just working with a lot of top doctors, top surgeons, um, a lot of holistic people, a lot of nurse practitioners, a lot of PAs. Um, they became some of my closest, dearest friends. Like they were amazing. I met some amazing people. Uh, Dr. Carter. Um, before he retired, uh, I, I pray and I hope God, I hope and pray to God that he's doing well. His whole family, he's such an awesome man. Um, you know, there's a lot of history in healthcare as far as, um, you know, it's a very corrupt system, it's a very wicked system, and most people don't even want to know how bad it is, you know. So uh, I had to, God had to teach me how to be more gracious and uh, just um, keeping a serenity prayer in mind, you know, when you're trying to give people information because some people just don't want it. Some people want to be sick. Some people are comfortable in their own dysfunction, you know, for whatever the reason may be. Some people have been convinced that they've got things that they don't really have, you know. And um, it's sad that America has taught, it's taught us to be sick and prescriptive, but it doesn't teach us how to be well. So you have people like um, um, Dr. Alan Mandel, the motivational doc. Please subscribe to him. He is awesome. Um, he is the best doctor I've ever came in contact with. He will give you all kind of recipes for viruses, anti-microbials, um, for toothache. Um, he tells you how to unclog your arteries. So if you want to come off any medications, I highly recommend you subscribe to him. Or you can listen to me as well. I've got some pointers too. I've dealt with a lot of different patients on a lot of different levels. Um, all kind of, you know, addicts. I, I, you know, that, that, didn't, that never mattered to me because I, people do what they do for a reason. It's always the heart of the person that I always sought out. So I was uh, probably the best to when I my most um most trouble patients i'll never forget him i love him i love him like my brother he's getting on my nerves because he was you know he was a little scam or whatever but i ain't paying no attention you know i made sure he was okay even when he went out of the facility you know people talked about him like a dog and he did what he did you know and that i didn't care that wasn't my place to judge him then he would come in and be like, oh, you know, he, you know, mm, Marcus and got this and he didn't. And I'm like, and I was looking at him out the side of my eye like, why are you judging him? You're here to be his nurse. You're not here to be worrying about what he's doing outside of this. And I wanted to say, really, you're probably doing the same thing. Or your husband or your baby dad or your mommy or somebody. Like, come on now. People be so, so judgmental and they don't even, like, they lose their ability to be like a, a human being or something. I don't really know. It's really weird. But anyway, I say all that to say this. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.